here is a broken part which will um, illustrate the first step putting it together what glue to use how to place the pieces together etc we use plastic tables to um, hold the uh, broken pieces together uh, we place them in certain orientation so um, we can dry run see how two pieces fit together um, once we know that that's the right position we take it out and we apply the glue to apply the glue you can use any disposable item uh, we can use uh, we use 3m uh, sticky notes where we place the epoxy it's a five minutes epoxy it's called clear epoxy it's made by PC epoxy you put even amounts and you mix it you can mix it with powdery pin tool which we use or a wooden stick after you mix it well both orientations you apply the epoxy on the surface that you've determined earlier that requires a glue you apply the pieces together and as you can see some glue squeezed out don't smear it it would be very difficult to remove if you smear it let it cure that way and then you place it in the right orientation and wait five to ten minutes to harden a bit uh, before you place the new piece you continue to glue the pieces uh, you do it in two sets perhaps you know every case is different for more detailed tutorial you can go to lexitepottery.com click on repair tutorials and one of them or well, actually several of them would walk you with more details uh, step by step how to put broken pottery or ceramic together um, just visit that site in the meantime I'm just going to show you some segments Once the glue is um, settled and cured for at least half an hour, you can use a blade like so. We like to bend the blade to give it some angle so it would remove the glue more effectively. And You do the same thing throughout the inside and the outside. To remove the epoxy from the inside, we use this uh, X-Acto blade knife, um, with, which allows to access the difficult to get areas. Sometimes when the epoxy is cured for too long, let's say overnight, um, it would be really hard to take it off so what we do is we use a torch uh, it's made by exacto i'm sorry it's made by blazer you heat it up a little bit that's all you need to do and then the glue comes off with much greater ease as you can see the next step is to use a feeler uh, as you can see there are gaps some fragment there's some space with in between the uh, repair line all of those need to be filled up uh, perfectly before we start applying the kintsugi process we use different materials for fillers the different circumstances the one we like to use the most is uh, two parts epoxy it sits in a heater that's a wax heater uh, it's set up to 110 degrees uh, the filler is more malleable it's easier to work with but it's not necessary um, but make sure the room is at least 75 degrees when you work with that so it is called PC11 
um, two parts, even parts, made by PC Epoxy. See the link below to their website. Um, you have different quantity. This one is the uh, eight ounces. Each can is four ounces. You really don't need more than that. They have larger sizes as well. So the two even parts of the PC11 epoxy were placed on a, again 3M, 3 by 3 inches sticky note and you have to mix it well until the two colors are equalized, until you don't see the difference between the gray and the white. Turn it around, do it the other way. Always clean the tool because you might have some left there that it's not mixed well and do it again. I use a small spatula to do that, that as an end like so. And uh, you can see the cracks here. Just gonna fill them. You push the PC11 a little bit hard in there. Don't just put it on the surface. It needs to get into every crack. Take axis off. The next step is to uh, clean the PC11 and just leave it where it needs to be, not on the outside surface. Uh, one way is to wait until the PC11 is cured and then sandpaper it, but uh, it, uh, some parts are sensitive to sandpapering, you can ruin the texture on the sheen. So we came up with a method that works really well. We use uh, alcohol, 91%. You put a lot of it in one of the rugs here and then you use this to wipe. So, so the rug is now saturated with alcohol um, and the objective is to clean the PC11. You have to do it within less than 20 minutes from the time that you've applied the PC11 otherwise it starts getting harder to clean. Um, and what you do is you, you rub the surface not too hard because you want to avoid digging out the PC11 from the cracks. You want it to come off where it shouldn't be and leave it where it's entrenched inside the crack. Once it's all clean, you can see that the crack is filled up with white. I don't know if you can see it with a glare. Now, when, when you clean, you move around the PC11 and you create sort of a white messy soup uh, that's going to be hard to clean later. So you take another rug, which it's clean, it's not the one that you used previously, uh, and you just clean the surfaces or the residual of the PC11. Again, don't push too hard. And uh, now you let it cure. You need to wait at least 24 hours or if you have an oven that you can heat it up at 110 degrees, 120 degrees, it would be cured within four or five hours. Otherwise, just let it be overnight. Never let it cure within temperature less than 70 degrees. So here's the bowl. The PC11 is all cured and it's ready to apply the lacquer. The lacquer is the material that's going to bond the gold powder into the pot. Um, we have some uh, cleaning solution. Once in a while we have to clean the brush. We have to dry it well. And I'll do a small example here, a small sample. Uh, we have different size brushes. This one it's a mid-range. We have thinner or thicker, depending on how thick you want the Kintsugi line to look like. Usually I use the pot against my body to be stable, but for the picture I'm doing it a little bit more difficult so you can see what I do. You have to be steady. And that's going to be a thin line applied right over the repair line. I just do this V for now. And uh, this 
lacquer would be tacky for about two to three hours. It would be sufficient to apply the gold anywhere between 15 minutes from now to two hours from now. So we are ready to apply the gold. You can see we have two pieces of paper. Both of them were folded to two sides to create those channels to allow the gold that falls down to be put back into the gold container. Uh, so nothing going to get wasted. Um, the other piece of paper is this where we're going to pour some gold so we can take it from there and apply it. That's all we need. Um, gold is expensive. This, this powder um, cost approximately uh, $290 for two grams. Two grams don't go a long way, but uh, again, that's why doing kintsugi with real gold is very expensive. And uh, the next lesson would be uh, to show you how we do it with gold substitute, which looks pretty close to gold. So uh, once, once we have the gold in here, in the lacquer, cured for at least 20 minutes, uh, again, the lacquer are going to be good for at least a couple of hours, we, we use extremely soft brush. Um, sable is what we use generally, but this is just for, for the viewer to be able to buy cheaper brush. As long as it's soft, you can take the gold, put on the brush, and you apply much more than you need. And you can even let it fall down. Push it a little bit in there, so more particle is going to get bonded to, to the lacquer. And you can see the uh, shape of the gold began to be refined. You can see that get close to the camera. Now we're ready to remove the gold powder that um, it's an axis of what we need. We use a harder brush. Um, you push the gold down so it would accumulate on the paper here and not get wasted. Then you take a soft cloth and you burnish it. You push the gold into the locker and then as you rub it, you can see the area around the gold is clean and the gold is burnished. Once we're done, let's assume this is done. We uh, place the leftover gold back in the container. So this is a non-gold process. Uh, we still use metal. In fact, we use more metal than the real gold process. We've developed a compound. It's proprietary. I'm sorry I can't share with you what's in it. There are three metals grinded a specific way. And um, being that it's not gold, um, it can get oxidized with time. So to solve that problem, uh, we created a compound that the metal get embedded into the compound. We, we mix it, and what makes the compound special, it's non-yellowing, um, it's extremely durable, the bond to the pot is extremely strong, it's more durable than the other process, the actual traditional kintsugi, and uh, we have distributed thousands of them, and we had zero return, people are generally happy with that. Uh, and you can see I, I use a pin tool. There are many tools. We have different tools, but let's stay with the basic. Depend on the effect we want to achieve. I take some, 
usually I work with it close to my body so I'll have more control but you can see how obviously you have to be extremely steady and how it get applied one of the beauty of this is that if it was a missing piece in here and it was a patch we can create a patch you can see how it relaxes and then creates continuous beautiful line um, we can go very very thin if you want to or thicker uh, I just use a sharper tool this one is not very sharp so I cannot achieve this perfectly here if I use a wider tool the line can be thicker etc that's how the non gold is done So here's the finished product. This is about two and a half hours later. Uh, it's all completed. This is non-gold. Um, and again, if we have done this with gold, it would cost six, seven times more. And, and the reason why we love to do this is that it enables a lot of people to afford and use that beautiful metaphor uh, for their own personal purpose. So every package we send Every box, every part that goes in there has a job to do to make somebody feel better about themselves. Thank you for listening.